What's up, Fight Fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Zile Zhang and Jerry Forrest. Zile puts in a dreary 10 rounds with Jerry Forrest. The, Ch the Chinese heavyweight contender, Big Bang Zhang, 22 0, one draw and 17 KOs chose the Alvarez versus your Durham undercard to lose a whole mess of credibility. Over 10 muddy rounds, Zhang plotted, clenched, and breathed heavily against the slugger Jerry Jones, which is 26-4, 1 in 20 KOs. Zhang, 37, professed to having ambitions of becoming an international boxing superstar by his logic so long as he continues his winning ways. He will Harness the awesome Chinese population to propel his career forward. With the strength of his nation supporting him, Big Bang believes that he can land a fight with the WBO, the WBA, and the IBF heavyweight champion AJ Joshua. This ambition is not all that far fetched. Zhang was already on a short list to face Joshua instead of going in the Big Bang direct, Big Bang's direction. Joshua opted to face Jarrell Miller after his performance against Forrest, though. He can probably go down, go ahead and forget about a showdown with Joshua. Now, this fight was very interesting. You know, he opened, Forrest opened up pretty quickly, even though it was Zhang coming forward. The slugger constantly kept him at bay with a quick straight jab, whether the shot landed or not. It marooned Big Bang on the perimeter. Zhang was landing the harder punchers, but they were a few and far between. After blasting his Chinese foe with a number of effective left hooks, Joan was abruptly dropped with a short left hook. The incident took place um, in the closing rounds of the first round. However, the second round <clears throat> began largely like the first. Zhang connected with a left hook and a right hook on Slugger's chin much earlier later in the round. Big Bang floored Forrest for the second time in the fight. Slugger hit the deck for the third time in the opening moments of the third period. To his credit, each time that he hit the dirt, Forrest rose and handled himself competently. In fact, by conclusion of the round, he was enjoying notable success. The fourth round was far uh, the best round for night for the Forrest. Once again, he was the more active fighter, landed more punches, and appeared to be getting comfortable. Zhang landed his sporadic punches, but chose to clinch and hug more than any other period. The fifth and sixth were a clinch field marathon for Zhang. Forrest would throw one or two sloppy punches and fallen in, leading into the immediate clinch. This generic sequence repeated for six straight minutes. The seventh opened up more purposeful for Forrest. For the first time, Slugger never seriously buzzed Zhang, but he snapped the head back around with a great frequency. In the eighth, Big Bang suffered a vertical clash in the middleweight of with his right eyebrow, which that's how he got cut. And <clears throat> even though Zhang had spent the better part of the last four rounds laying on Forrest, he looked like the more spent competitor. Trying to capitalize on his withering <laughs> energy, Slugger di dictated himself to a nasty body attack in the conclusion of a ninth of the ninth. Zhang was deducted a point for holding. Feeling that the fight hung in the balance, Forrest aggressively went after bang, Big Bang in the tenth and final round. All that said and done, people, it was a draw. Wow. Um, I came in on the seventh round. That's why I narrated a lot that I've, uh, didn't see. I got to watch it again. And my counterpunch to Zhang is Zhang should really, I think whatever was wrong with him. I don't know if it was, he was distracted. I don't know if I think maybe now he needs a strength and strength and conditioning coach. Because Mr. Forrest, a guy with 26 wins with four losses, he also has 20 knockouts. So he has a high knockout percentage. Now, if Jerry Forrest was in better shape, this probably would have been a, 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 different, a totally different fight. But then again, Zhang, I feel, wasn't where he's supposed to be. You know, he either did two things. One, he underestimated Forrest. 
and thought he was going to get him out of there early, so he spent most of himself. Maybe the knockdowns made him feel, okay, you know, when you knock a guy down and he gets back up, cool. You knock a guy down again and he gets back up, cool. You knock a guy down for the third time and he gets back up, you're like, damn, <laughs> what's the deal? So that might have discouraged him. But I can tell you this, from what I saw from round seven and ten, he won't even, he wouldn't, look, he should... I would love to see him fight someone like Chisora, and Chisora would probably knock him out. Why? Because Chisora is a guy that loves what he does. Not saying that Zhang doesn't. I think Zhang hasn't been tested the way he's supposed to. Because Jerry Forrest, he drawed with him. That's his first on his record, okay? But I think if he got in there with better and stiffer competition, let's say someone like Efe Ajagba, I think he would get knocked out. Because if he gasses out like he did with Jerry Forrest, and someone like Effie Ajagba, an ex-soccer player, would just, we would have a field day. With the straight, long, rangy punches that he possesses, now he'd have a field day. So him calling out Anthony Joshua, I don't see that happening. Okay? I don't see him wanting that fight. I think people should ask him what he desired after the draw because he did walk away very, very, very looking undefeated. Right? Or should I say discouraged, defeated, not undefeated, defeated. He's still uh, undefeated, but he's still defeated by default of a draw. But I think he had a tough fight. I think he ran out of gas or he or he may have problems with stamina. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think of Zhang versus Forrest having a draw in 10 rounds. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunching. Peace.